Yes, okay. So, um, today we have Professor Simon Eikhoff. Um, he is going to be a keynote speaker at OHBM 2018. If you meet a random person on the street, mm -hmm. how would you describe your research to him or her? I would probably say that uh, I'm... I would say that I'm interested in finding out how the brain is organized mm -hmm. and how it's variable across persons, how this variability then relates to things like cognitive capacities mm -hmm. or personality traits, and that ultimately I want to contribute to developing new tools, new options for diagnosing, for treating neurological or psychiatric disorders. Mm. Okay. This might be a bit early, um, but can you give me a teaser or preview of your OHBM keynote lecture? Well, it's definitely going to be about the things that I'm excited about. So brain mapping, individual differences, and I think the combination of functional neuroanatomy and data science. Mm -hmm. I don't think I have any other good topics to talk about. <laughs> uh, well, I could talk about a lot of other things, but most of the people at OHBM wouldn't be interested right. in them. So I'm definitely going to talk about these kind of things. Yeah. Can you elaborate a little bit more? Um, so. I think one of the things that, that I'm most excited about on our research at the moment mm -hmm. is this idea to bridge the neuroanatomy brain organization perspective with the data science predictive mm -hmm. uh, analysis part. Mm -hmm. So the question is, can we use the information that we have from decades of, of neuroscience research and, and really almost a cent uh, centuries of, of clinical research, can we use that also to inform uh, let's say uh, predictive models. Mm -hmm. So rather than taking a purely data-driven view, mm -hmm. which which by itself is very exciting, mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Uh, and just say, well, let the data speak for itself, and mm -hmm. I'm later wondering what, uh, pretending to know nothing about the brain, and later mm -hmm. wonder about what the data gives me. Mm -hmm. Maybe we should find more of a of a crosstalk between mm -hmm. sort of the the neural anatomy, functional neural anatomy brain organization perspective, mm -hmm. and the data science um, statistical learning perspective. Mm -hmm. uh, we, we're starting to do that, mm -hmm. and I think the first results are quite encouraging. Mm -hmm. So I, I hope to be able to convince some other people with mm -hmm. my keynote that this may be a very reasonable way to go. Mm. Okay, I see. So um, since you're so successful, what kind of advice would you give other researchers or aspiring researchers? Uh, don't listen to career advice. I mean, it's just, no, it, it, I'm serious yeah. about that. If you, if you just see what, what you as a student get for, uh, in terms of advice, uh, move abroad, change the lab, be broad in topic, be focused on topic, collaborate a lot, uh, concentrate on your own things. I get so many contradictory <laughs> advisors that um, my advice would be don't, don't get crazy by trying to follow every advice mm -hmm. and, and optimizing your sort of CV and career mm -hmm. paths um, to really check all the boxes on mm -hmm. the on the advice scale, mm -hmm. uh, rather have have fun in what mm -hmm. you're doing. Mm -hmm. Be really excited, and if not, then you change, of course. But mm -hmm. if you have something you're excited about, mm -hmm. then uh, do it, mm -hmm. uh, but not naively, obviously. So right. uh, the, that that would be my, my one big advice. Mm -hmm. uh, and the other one is uh, be open, be collaborative. Mm -hmm. It it does pay off in the end. So mm -hmm. uh, I think these are the two things that I would really that I'm teaching the students in my lab, right. and I will also give to to the broader audience of right. young researchers. Right. Mm -hmm. Okay.